give us an update on the timing around COVID relief and then secondly on abortion protection? What yeah. left is there for Democrats to do? Well, you, as you've heard me say before, public sentiment is everything. Abraham Lincoln, uh, I think that it, once women understand across the country what this means to them, this is not a public policy debate that is isolated from the personal impact that it has on the lives of women, whether it's contraception, whether it's in vitro fertilization, whether it's uh, post-miscarriage care, whether it's uh, size and timing of a family. It is personal between a woman, her doctor, her God, her family, not the Supreme Court or the Congress of the United States. So again, it's about how women value their decision making and we think they do. The, um, we have passed the legislation. We've been ready for a long time. And uh, you give me the opportunity to say this. The Senate, uh, I hear some voices out there saying, well, why don't they just do the Republican bill? Well, and, and the House bill goes beyond Roe v. Wade. No, it doesn't. What it does, it does Roe v. Wade as re affirmed by Casey. So it's Roe v. Wade and then the protect, further protections and clarifications of Casey. That is what we want to enshrine as law. And so that's what we have to make sure people understand. It's not enough just to pass a bill to have a compromise. It's not a compromise because what's in the Republican bill uh, would enable states to do uh, very destructive things when it comes to a woman's right to choose. And then COVID, uh, th those discussions continue. We must pass COVID. It, it, it is absolutely essential to health and well-being of the American people. But in the timing of things, we were ready with Ukraine, so we moved with that. Now we must be ready with COVID. And I'm optimistic uh, that we will do that.